Coming up on Jet Life, we introduce a few new segments, including Twitter Talk, where players answer your questions. We also take a look back at some of the best plays from Week 2, and we preview tomorrow's matchup against the Broncos. Plus, Leger Dusable joins us for a round of Helmet Talk. Stick around. And we welcome you to a new season of New York Jets football. Fires one up the seam, and he's got a connection. At the goal line, the push into the end zone. Yes, that's a Jet touchdown. Welcome back to Jet Life inside the BetMGM studios. We have another great show for you. It's getting cooler outside, pumpkin spice latte season's here. But for John Franklin Myers, starting to get hot. Two sacks in two games, but he didn't always get this kind of love that he's getting now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to rewind the clock to when JFM was a college prospect at Stephen F. Austin. This is John Franklin Myers, and this is my scouting report. Weaknesses. You know, we start off with the weaknesses. Not a clean position fit at either defensive end. There's been times in his career where he majored as an outside rusher. There's times in his career where he was primarily an inside rusher. Um, I think the best way to utilize his skill set is a little bit of both. Lacks bend as a rusher. Chris Mason, the block. Here they come. Franklin Myers grabbed him and spun him around, and down he went. Average lateral agility and overall athleticism. Doesn't wow. <laughs> Doesn't wow with his athleticism or length. Oh, man. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. John Franklin Myers is the one that hit the arm. We'll go, we'll start, we'll go with the strengths. Tape is full of him bludgeoning blockers across from him. Carries bang behind his pads and can knock opponents off balance when his leverage is right. Appreciate that. Super aggressive off the snap and can whip blockers with powerful first step. That's a fair assessment. John Franklin Myers, the first to get back there. I'd say I give it a B. They did a pretty good job here. All right, here's the deal. We asked for questions and you delivered. You know, there is a saying, teamwork makes the dream work. And yes, that may be true. But in this case, it's made for a new segment. And I think you're going to like it. I'm Justin Hardy. This is just Twitter talk. Favorite NFL player to watch? Uh, probably go with my boy, man. One of my best friends, Marshawn Lattimore. Do you ever think there will ever be a, born, a boy born who can swim faster than a shark? <laughs> um, I love to see it, but I don't know. Them sharks fast, and especially when there's blood in the water. What's your favorite video game? Favorite video game, uh, even though I'm on mad and I love 2K. Honey bun or oatmeal cream pie? Honey bun all day. That's, that shouldn't even be a question. I don't have to explain what's understood, man. You know what I mean by that. Worst drill to do in practice? Uh, I don't know, my rookie year, uh, we did a drill where we were just running into each other. What's your favorite part of playing special teams? Uh, my favorite part of playing special teams is everything, you know, because special teams gave me an opportunity um, that offense and defense didn't give me initially coming into the league. So I love everything about special teams. Thanks, Jess Twitter Talk. Appreciate you. I'm Greg Van Roden, and this is Lip Reading. Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> It's gonna be terrible. Stone. Go. Cold. Cold. Close. Steve. Smith. Austin. Irish. Go home, Smith. What are we doing? What words are you giving them? Uh, uh. You're close. We'll go to the next one. All gas. All gas, no brakes. Yeah, nice. Cooks cook cupcakes quickly. <laughs> Cooks. Gone. <laughs> Your Long Island accent, I feel like, yeah, is happening. Definitely not. Right. Hasta la vista, baby. How do you feel about the baby? <laughs> <laughs> 
the last word was good. Give it to me one more time. I, I think we're close. Pasta. Ice. No. Dude, this is this is so bad. <laughs> salsa? Chips and salsa? <laughs> bad clue. Bad clue. Left side, strong side. Left side, strong side. Elephant shoes? <laughs> Close. Olive juice. Olive juice? Yeah. I love you. <laughs> You're on mute. Something music? You are on mute. Turn up the music. <laughs> don't don't turn up the music. Pikachu, I choose you. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Durs. Let's go, Durs. Let's go, Durs. Let's go. Heard it. Tell me it's Saturday without telling me it's Saturday. It's top moment of the week time, and coming in at number three, Quincy Williams making his Jets debut in style, laying the lumber on James White with the little Selly too. I love the Selly. Keep it coming, Quincy. Defense, by the way, flew around on Sunday. Coming in at number two, Braxton Berrios with a little toe drag swag. Spatial awareness, great throw. Can we pause it right here? Take a look at Braxton Berrios barely getting his feet in. He led the Jets with seven receptions for 73 yards. And coming in at number one is you, Jets fans. It was great to see you at MetLife. The roar of the crowd, I missed it. I hope you guys did too, and plus, we get to have cool moments like this one. Nick Mangle chugging on the Jumbotron. Can we get the timer out? Seriously, for number 74? Pretty impressive showing, but next time, Mangle and I, we're going head to head, and that is your top moment of the week. And I know it's late, but before we head to the break, it's trivia time. So which Jets punter holds the record for the longest punt in NFL history? Don't touch the remote, don't do it, and don't look up the answer either. We'll have it on the other side. If you're just joining us, saddle up, partner, because it's trivia time. Which Jets punter holds the record in NFL history for the longest punt? The answer, Steve O'Neill. He had a 98-yard punt against the Broncos in Denver. Hold on, let me repeat that. 98 yards. Yes, it makes sense because the altitude is a factor, but also look at this roll. Very lucky bounce, but sometimes you need a little bit of luck. What do we know about head coach Robert Sala? He's fun, he's energetic, passionate, hardworking. I can keep going on, but how did he get to where he is now? Here's this week's One Jets Drive Wheels Up presented by JetBlue. I think the greatest thing that I could take back from, from the community and especially my family is just the closeness of the entire community and where everybody is really trying to serve one another to, to find ways to get better and to achieve whatever it is they're trying to achieve with their own personal goals. And you just look at interaction within that community. Everybody's got everybody's back. Uh, everyone's really taking care of one another. And so uh, to be able to take that and outside what I call the bubble of uh, Dearborn, Michigan, to take that outside and just kind of stay true and, and authentic to, to who we are as individuals, I think that's been the, the greatest tool that, that's been given to me. In a town made up of over 90% Middle Easterners, football is king. It almost serves as the, as the bridge uh, between cultures. Uh, football is the greatest sport in America and, and here is a, a school where I went to school for, it's in high school, it's almost 95% Middle Eastern. It's a passion of Middle Eastern people that at one point Fortson High School had 34 consecutive non-losing seasons. Just that acting as a bridge uh, between cultures has been, you know, it's almost been a godsend for, for the people, so. I feel like I, I was introduced to football when I came out the womb, to be honest with you. Um, I was a water boy for my brother's uh, Pee Wee football team when I was five years old. And ever since then, I've been involved uh, with football with a small hiatus when I graduated college for a couple of months. But my high school had a Sala from 1964 to 1997 on its team. Uh, so it's been, there is a long history of, uh, with regards to my family and football. So it's been, it's been my whole life. As he rose the NFL coaching ranks, 
Sala's principles remain consistent. When he was coaching our linebacker group in Jacksonville, we just we, we wanted to come up with uh, almost a philosophy of, of how we wanted to play. And that was, you know, we always talk about playing fast, you know, not, not only physically, but, but mentally. That, that's even more important. Just being, having, having a crystal clear mindset and knowing that regardless of what happens on the field, you are going full speed, all out, all the time. And if you make mistakes, you make mistakes, but just make them extremely fast and play as, as fast and as physical as you can. In a unique way of, of really giving the information to the players, something that may at times seem complicated, he had the ability to make it simple and really share only the information needed for the players to be successful. Sometimes as coaches, we give them you know, all the information and it can slow them down. It was just natural for him to do that and really you know, get them the information needed. I think it's just the way he allows the players to, to kind of form the way this thing is going to go. You know, I think he has his principles, his standards he stands on. Uh, and that's big, you know, it starts up top. So, you know, he has the things he believes in, he values. He's a man that's very detailed, um, very positive, right? And he's, when he speaks, he speaks with a mission on his mind, you know? So when you have a, a person in front, you know what I mean, a leader in front that he has a mission in mind. It's kind of hard not to follow. After 45 rushing yards at Carolina, the Jets rebounded in a big way on the ground. And for more on that, here's senior reporter Eric Allen for this week's Next Gen Stat. The Jets head into week three action with the ground game that got on track last week against the Patriots. The Jets rushed for 152 yards against New England, averaging 4.9 yards per carry. They got chunk gainers on the ground, receiving 17-yard rushes from both Tevin Coleman and Ty Johnson, while Michael Carter had a 14-yard carry, and even quarterback Zach Wilson got into the act with a 10-yard scramble. He's going to scramble to his left, tuck it under and run. Gets across the 30, across the 35, and dragged down. Carter, a fourth round pick from North Carolina, picked up more than 10 yards on two carries to the left and one to the right. He's an explosive player with a low center of gravity and has the ability to make people miss and run through tackle. Johnson had three rushes of at least five yards with his 17 yarder coming off the right side of the line. Coleman exploded through a big hole up the middle on his long run that put the Jets into scoring territory. Right up the middle, gets to the secondary, breaks it left to the 40, inside the 35-yard line of New England. The production took place behind a line that had moved George Fant to left tackle and inserted right tackle Morgan Moses into the starting lineup following Mekhi Becton's knee injury. Also, left guard Elijah Vera Tucker was making his second pro start. Jets Broncos should be a special one for Carter, who shared the offensive backfield with the Broncos' Javante Williams at North Carolina. This is a duo who combined for an NCAA record 544 yards on the ground in North Carolina shellacking of Miami last December. Carter will face the Broncos' fourth-ranked rush defense Sunday, while Williams will be pursued by the Jets' ninth-ranked defense. The Jets hit the road this week again. It's time for our road trip edition here on Jet Life. Let's bring in Broncos team reporter Sydney Jones. Sydney, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on. All right, so the Broncos, hot start to the season. What has been the key to their success over the past two weeks? Right, well, I think our defense is one for sure. I mean, we have a really dominant defense, and I know I'm biased, but we currently rank third in the NFL in yards allowed per game. Offensively, the Broncos have only turned the ball over once, you know, a fumble in week one against the Giants. But while getting, we did get three turnovers on defense so far. So I think if the Broncos keep, you know, that turnover differential high, they'll continue to see success. But I mean, also just the amount of talent that we have on this team. I mean, we got Cortland Sutton, we got Noah Fant, Teddy Bridgewater, Melvin Gordon, you know, Von Miller, Justin Simmons. I mean, the list 
goes on. I think the ceiling is truly really high for this team. And I, I think it's going to be a really fun season to watch, to watch them kind of grow as it goes on. So obviously new quarterback under center for the Broncos, Teddy Bridgewater, a former Jet, although it was just for one off season, couple months. How has Teddy played through his first two games and what type of offense do you think that the Jets can be expecting Sunday? Right. I have to say, Ethan, I have been so impressed with Teddy Bridgewater. You know, not that I, I was really surprised by Teddy's performances within the first two weeks because, you know, I saw him all at training camp. You know, just his pocket awareness is so, so good. It, his ability to escape pressure, extend, you know, plays on his feet has really impressed me within the first two weeks. And I know it's going to continue to impress me the rest of the season. You know, I think that's something the Jets defense should really be on the lookout for. But but also hasn't thrown any interceptions. You know, I think he's someone who's quite underrated in this league. He, he's just really poised and has shown the ability to lead this team. So as somebody who covers the team, who lives out there, the altitude, is it real? Like what, what is the, the difference for players and what is the difference for like a, a standard civilian who's just going to Denver for fun? Right. I I mean, the altitude is no joke. We're a mile up here, you know, 5,280 feet above sea level. I always joke because I've lived here for just over a year and a half now. And I'm not going to lie, I still get winded walking up the stairs. I mean, you, you can certainly feel, you know, the decreased level of oxygen here. And I, I mentioned this to you earlier, Ethan, before we started this, that I'm from Florida. So like moving here, it was a big adjustment for me and one that I'm still, you know, adjusting to. It, it, it's really no joke. You guys are going to feel it. And that is the perfect way to end this road trip segment on Jet Life. Sydney, thanks a lot. And I will see you Sunday, 5,000 feet above sea level. Can't wait. Thanks so much, Ethan, for having me on. My first sports jersey I ever had was Dwayne Wade's jersey when he was at the Heat. Whenever I wore it, I felt like I played like him. You know, I love basketball. So I think I think I still have it today, too. So which is pretty, you know, pretty cool. So. It's time to bring back a familiar friend, not talking about Leger Doosable, talking about the segment Helmet Talk. I'll let you do the honors. Let's see what we got in here. You're on a game show. Who are you taking to be your partner and win it all? Ooh, let me think about this one. I'm actually probably taking Nick Mango. Um, he's one of the most interesting teammates I've ever had. I actually just did his tailgate show the other day. And as far as knowing a lot of useless knowledge, I think Nick <laughs> Mango would be a perfect guy to go on a game show hold with. I'm glad you answered first because you were buying me time. <laughs> I'm thinking about Justin Hardy. Mm, okay. And Justin Hardy, somebody, I don't know how many people know this, three college degrees. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like fans are like, oh, that's like the special teams ace. Yeah. yeah, he is, but off the field, he's got a lot that I think he can offer. All right, here we go. Question number two. If you were a superhero, mm. Which player would you choose as a sidekick? Ha! Okay. Sidekick. If I'm a superhero yeah. and I'm assuming I look like me, <laughs> right? I need somebody who's the opposite <laughs> of me, right? Going fully Fadakasi. That's a good one. Kind of like the Hulk smashes mm -hmm. everything in the middle of the defensive line. I'm going to go with his defensive line mate, John Franklin Myers. So I need a guy that can do multiple things. So he plays on the outside of defensive end, then they move him inside of the three technique. I'm going to go JFM because I want somebody that's versatile that can do multiple things. So All right, take us home. Uh, if you could take one skill slash the talent from a current player, what would it be and why? Honestly, it might be Justin Hardy and his business degree <laughs> <laughs> to make money off the field. Like yeah. I always want to incur more knowledge. So a guy that has a few business, a few degrees in that aspect, that's a guy I would probably want to take some of his skill set for some of that. So for me, I never played in the NFL. I'm thinking, like, whose skill would I want? Yeah, I'm yeah. going Thomas Hennessy, long snapping. <laughs> give, me, uh, give me longevity in the uh, NFL. Hey, they played for about 20 years. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so that's longevity. A, that's a smart decision right there. They can't get hit anymore. That's true, especially right? on PAT and field goals. That's, so. that's what I'm talking about. So I have a long NFL career, make some money, and then. Walk away healthy. And also, Thomas Hennessy went to Duke, so, you know. If, Pretty smart guy. That's what I'm talking about. Pretty smart guy, I like it. And that's how we wrap up Helmet Talk, <laughs> Leger. Appreciate it. Of course, thanks for having me. That's all we have on this episode of Jet Life. We will see you next week right here inside the BetMGM Studios.